was excitement and, and a few nerves as well. I think nerves are, are a good thing. It, it shows that it means something to you. A race worth $6 million. We've all discussed that this is the strongest cup field that we've, that we've all seen for sure. Fiorente ran second last year. His very first run for Gay Waterhouse. What we're looking for is for him to be nice, cool, calm and relaxed. That's what he is. He's a great stayer. He's my pick. First time I've ridden Fiorente in a race, but I've done a lot of track work on the horse. I'm confident in the horse's ability. I know he's well prepared. Perfect draw. I've got good chances all around me in Brown Panther and Dan Dino. So we're just about set. They leave the gates very quickly in a Melbourne Cup for a, for a staying race. you just got to be careful that you don't get left behind at the start. Jump well, in a good position. You've got to be positive here to hold a good position. They're going quicker than I expected for the first part of this race, and I'm a little bit further back than what I anticipated. Not probably be as close as Gay wanted me, but I was, I was in a good position with good horses around me, with Dan Dino to my inside and, and Red Cadeau just up in front of me. But the horse is travelling well and he's in a good rhythm, which is most important, because we've got a long way to go. As you come down to the clock tower here, you can hear that crowd roar. It's deafening. Well, as we go out of the straight the first time, you're, you're usually expecting the, the pace to come off in the race at this time, but it didn't really seem to happen. It can just about come up to the 2,000 metre mark here. I can see Gerard Mosse up in front of me on Red Cadeau. Red Cadeau's on a very wide move. Red Cadeau starts to move forward a little bit, and um, but I didn't want to be going that soon. I was happy with the position I was in. I can now see Simonon. He's starting to make a move. He's another good chance. As they go to the 1,400. The race starts to pack up at this point, and... Um, you feel like you want to go, but you've got to resist. I'm going really good here, but I don't want to go yet. The Simonon goes around the outside with Fiorente. Safe sweep down towards the home turn. I can't wait any longer. I'm going too good. I can see Royal Empire out onto my outside. I nudge, start to nudge him out of the way and get my horse into some clear galloping room. Fiorente starting to come home hard and then came super cool. Setting out after Red Cadeau now. And I know he's going to be hard to catch, but from him going a little bit early, I've got a feeling that he might be able to sustain that sort of effort. Come on, Fiorente. Red Cadeau tackled by Fiorente. I know I've got him covered. Now I've just got to fight it off and hold right to the line. Come on, Fiorente. Let's go. It's Fiorente in front of the outside with Red Cadeau. Can't believe it. We can win another Melbourne Cup here. Fiorente by a neck. Oliver's lifting him. A vast... Fiorente for his biggest effort, pins those ears back as we know he does, and he charges to the line. Who's coming to do it? Fiorente by a neck. Oh, hey. oh, lifting him, and Fiorente won the Melbourne Cup for game. Your body's just overcome with emotion. This is what every jockey dreams of. The first lady of racing in the world conquers the biggest mountain imaginable. The great decision she made was to put Damien Oliver on the horse. He's the coolest head in Australian racing. This is a pretty special moment here where you have a special bond with just you and the horse. Amazing feeling. It's over 10 years since I won my last Melbourne Cup. Oh, didn't you ride him a treat? That huge honour of coming back down the roses, down that famous Flemington race. And to win Gay's first one as well. What a wonderful piece of history.